Hello everyone, my name is Zachary Dawson. Today we are going to be learning about the Taylor series for the function the square root of x plus 1. So, no, it's a pretty difficult one, but with these steps I'm pretty sure that we'll be able to figure it out at the end. Okay, to start off, go ahead and write the function. Let's take a couple derivatives of the function and plug them in at f equals 0. So, at n equals 0, the very first function of derivative, if we plug in 0, that's 1, raised to the 1 half, we get a value of 1. Take the derivative of the value here, plug in 1 again, we get 1 half. Continue on this function, we see we have a negative right here, negative 1 fourth times of x plus 1 to the negative 3 halves. Plug in 0, we get negative 1 fourth. Third derivative, we get a 3 eighths, fourth, fifth, sixth. Let's see how the function goes. Six function, negative 945 over 64 times x plus 1 to the negative 11 halves gives us, of course, negative 945 over 64. So here are the derivatives of the function. And we're going to start looking here. Because once we take those derivatives and look at f as it's plugged in, we're going to look for a pattern. Right now on the numerator, we should say we've got 1, 1, 1, 3, 15, 105, and 945. And on the denominator, we have 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and 64. So we're going to try to figure out the patterns from here. So let's start with the numerator. The numerator, as you see how the function is written out, or the, excuse me, the number is written out. Right now, we have 1, 1, then 3. So we multiply by 3 to get here. Then multiply to get 5. Multiply to get by 7, and then 9. And if you continue on with this function, that, that same trend continues on. So... This is almost like a n factorial, but it skips one. But luckily for us, there's a special function that does that. It's called n factorial. Now, you've probably never heard of it. I've never heard of it either when I started to research this. But even though it looks slightly weird, it is not actually all very complicated. Usually, n factorial goes like 7 times 6 times 5 times 4, etc. n double factorial simply just skips one. So if we start at 5, it's going to go 5 times 3 times 1. And if it starts at an even number, 6 times 4 times 2. And or it's just going to equal 1 if n equals negative 1 or 0. But in these cases, which one we'll use, it starts with an odd, so it just skips every other one. Pretty simple concept. So for these numbers here, what works out is 2n minus 3 double factoria factorial, excuse me. So, let's plug in some of these values. If we plug in 0, that gives us a negative 3. So we're going to have to rewrite it, as I have here, so we get something that fits all values. If we plug in, of course, 1, we get negative 1 factorial, which according to this gives us 1. We plug in 2, we get 1 factorial, which is, of course, 1. We plug in 2, we get 4 minus 3, or I just went if we plug in 3, we get 2 times 3 minus 3, 3 factorial, so that will give us 3 times 1, which up here gives us the 3. We plug in 4, 2 times 4 is 8, 8 minus 3 is 5, this is 5 times 3 times 1. Get there, we plug in 5, we of course get 7, gives us the 105, 7 times 5 times 3. Of course 6, we get 9, 945, that's how we get the trend here. So. 2n minus 3 works, all except for the very first couple of values. So, we're going to rewrite it as 2n minus 1 double factorial over 2n minus 1. How does this work? Because 2n minus 1 factorial is the same as 2n minus 1 times 2n minus 3 double factorial. Those two would essentially cancel out, so these are equivalent values. But we still have a double factorial, and if you have like a TI-84 or basic calculators, that it doesn't work. So we're going to try something a little bit easier. We're going to have a double factorial, try to convert it to a single. But if we multiply 2n minus 1 double factorial times 2 to the n times n factorial, we will get 2n in parentheses factorial. Why? Because, of course, 2n double factorial gives us 2n minus 1 2n minus 3, 2n minus 5, and over here, 2 to the n 
times n factorial gives you these. But since this n right here gives the same number of n's, will be in number of functions here, it's essentially multiplying all of them by 2. So it gives us 2n, 2n minus 2, 2n minus 4. So if we look at it, we have 2 to the n, 2 to the n minus 1, 2n minus 2, 2n minus 3, 2n minus 4, 2n minus 5. And that function continues on to give us 2n factorial. So in essence, it says 2n double factorial times 2 to the n times n factorial gives us that. We can divide these two, and we have a new function for 2n double factorial gives us this. Now our numerator will equal this, and of course it's 2n minus 1 from the original part. So this gives us the numerator. Now if we look back at the denominator, what do we have? 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. Very simple concept. It's a simple 2 to the n to the denominator. So our denominator is very simple. And then if we look back at our signs, it goes positive, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. So except for the first two, they alternate. So we're going to throw in this negative 1 to the n in the numerator. So we're going to start right here, numerator over denominator to finish our Maclaurin series, or the f of n to the x part. So we have a negative 1 to the n times a 2 to the n from the numerator, a 2 to the n from the complicated double factorial we came from, a 2 to the n from a denominator, n factorial, 2n minus 1, to give us this grand sum. But we know that a Maclaurin or Taylor series since this is a Maclaurin centered at 0, we don't have to worry about the x minus a, equals f to the n times a over n factorial times, or not times, gives us a x to the n. So, we will have the final function here for this. But if we are to actually plug it in, these begin to alternate the wrong way as we had before. We want them alternating this way. So, but no simple problem. Just switch this part around and we're good to go. So our final function of x plus 1 to the 1 half of the Maclaurin or Taylor series as n equals 0 and it approaches infinity here it is, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. And if you want to see it expanded a little bit, here's the equation again. And here's the expansion as you go n equals 0, 1, 2, 3, on and on, yada, yada, yada. And it continues on. Um, shout out to A. Spence Monster. He gave us a lot of information. His link to his website is down below and it explains a lot of this stuff in detail about the stuff. And that is it. And uh, go Yellow Jackets.